Uh, just a short notification before I start. I was online and Shlomi dropped me a message and I asked, yeah, I'm about to do a talk. Do you want to say hi to everyone? So this is Shlomi Fish, if you know him. He says hi. hi. Now you have to write it. They say hi back. It's just stupid. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Me doing win. All right. So I'm back, right, okay. Uh, I want to talk about Fat Packer. How many people here heard about it but do not know what it does or ha haven't used it? That's it, everyone used it? Oh, okay, that makes more sense, all right. So Fat Packer, um, Sawyer, of course, we know, right? Okay, um, so Fat Packer, you know, for packing, yeah? all right. Um, so what does it do? Fat Packer tracks your dependencies. It bundles them all up and then it puts everything, it packs everything into a single file, everything. Why would you want this? Well, first of all, you gotta ship code, right? You gotta handle dependencies, I hope. And sometimes we don't have local lib there, sometimes we don't have CPAN there, and sometimes we have some weird corporate considerations. I worked at a company, which I will not name, that said you can write modules, but you cannot put them remotely. You could use them remotely, you just can't put them there. Nor could you use something like the PAR remote, which allows me to use stuff on the wire automatically. No, you can't do that. So I had to, do, to, to get creative. All right, uh, sometimes we have really odd users, and sometimes we have regular users. We just want to be friendlier and ship an application that is self-contained, like CPAN minus, that's self-contained, and that's very useful for a lot of people. Of course, object remote is the actual reason the Fat Packer was written for, and none of the above, or sort of all of the above. But um, object remote is another reason I will not get into. And you should uh, check it out in Man CPAN. That's another good reason that's more complex to explain. And now, how does it work? The thing is, I really like Fat Packer, and I was really interested in the way it works. And reading about it kind of blew my head up for a bit. But then I really thought that it would be something maybe other people would be interested in. First of all, you trace a uh, script. And it, what it does is use the tracer here. And the tracer uses B which is the back end for the compiler, and the import function calls b minus c. And p b minus c basically activates, you know how you run Perl and just compile check for something? So using b minus c like that, that's, that's what it means. It says, from now on, I'm just gonna run into compile mode. And that's kind of tricky because from now on, no code is gonna run. So yes, I can find all the, the modules that you're gonna load, and I'm not gonna run your code, but I will not be able to actually do something with what I found because I can't run anything, except for some blocks. Does anyone what knows what runs even under compilation? <laughs> Thank you, what else? Check. Check, there you go, there it is. So the problem with begin, it runs, even if you just run compilation. The problem with, with it is that it, it's compile time. However, there is the check block, and the check block is post compile time, post import. So you can run things after the import, after everything has been compiled and you've loaded all the modules that you need, excluding require and lazy loading. So it does this thing where it has a check block and then it uses checks for a file and otherwise it's, uh, it dies and then it goes through your ink, your include, and it checks for the initial include and it's able to print out whatever you loaded in your script, which is really cool. The next step is to get pack lists for. And packlist4 does a cat on the, on the trace and push everything to a file. It looks kind of like this. Packlists contain the modules that a distribution install. If I do a cat for a packlist for HTTP tiny, I can see that it installed just HTTP tiny and a manual for it. So this is what it gets. It gets HTTP tiny. Now it knows it needs that distribution. The next thing is tree. And if I give a tree um, the packlists, it will say, that's cool, I can find the stuff for it. So it creates a tree of all the distributions. Once I run it, I see they created a fat lib directory. Inside it, you have HTTP tiny, which requires carp, which requires carp heavy. So we create a tree of all these modules, right? There you go. So it knows what to pack. And the next step is obviously to create a file. So we do a pack file, uh, a, a fat pack file, which creates a file of that directory. Then I add on top of it, or at the end of it, I guess, depends how you look at it, my script. And then I push everything into a new file, that's it. And then I, got, I get a new file, so I <coughs> just pack everything. The way it packs it, it looks like this. There's the begin block, then it has a hash for all of the pack stuff, and then it just gives indexes for everything and then packs the modules in there, okay? Then it removes the spaces, 
and it puts everything into ink where there are uh, subroutines that pop up and create the files automatically and use them. One warning, only supports pure Perl, which means if you're using Cess, sucks for to be you. <laughs> and in summary, trace the file, pack list for the cat, cat the file and pack list for it, then tree that one and just file. That's it, that's the entire steps. So thank you, that's Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Thank you to all the Lightning Talk speakers. They were great. <laughs> That's it for today. I'm looking forward to a nice cold drink in Cafe Extra Blatt. See you there.